guys, I am so, so excited about this new journey that we're going on together. If you don't know me, my name is Gabby, and I am going to be doing a Bible study on this YouTube channel, and I am so excited about it. Um, the very first book that we're going to read through together is Ephesians, and I absolutely love Ephesians. Um, if you've never read it before, I'm glad that we get to do it together. I want to start off by saying that this Bible study is for um, people that are new in their faith, that are that have been Christians their whole life. Um, I want this to really be for everybody and I want somebody, everybody to be able to get a takeaway from it. So if you are completely new to the Bible and you've never read anything from it before, I want you to be able to understand and get something from this. And if, like I said, if you've been a Christian your whole life, I hope that you get something from this as well. And I also would love to make this just some talking points um, in a way for us to communicate with each other. So if you have comments that you want to say relating to the scripture you can go ahead and comment them down below um, right underneath the description box and I would love to chat with you guys about some stuff that stuck out to you that's different from maybe something that um, I take from the scripture um, and I absolutely love just talking about scripture and Jesus and all of that stuff so I'd be more than willing to have a conversation with you about it or if you're stuck on something I can try my best to um, be there and have some answers for you. So to start off let's um, talk about Ephesians and why the book is important. So the author of Ephesians, his name is Paul, and Paul is one of my favorite people in the Bible, and he's probably my favorite writer. Um, he wrote this book while he was in prison, um, and the overall theme of Ephesians is unity um, in the church and in Christ. And unfortunately, it has some of the worst news, which is that we're all sinners and we all have this disease inside of us that nothing can be done about, we can do about. Um, and the best news is that God made us alive in Christ and that there is an answer to our sin, even though we um, don't have control over it and can't do anything about it ourselves. So Ephesians is written to a group of people in Ephesus and they are talked about in Acts 19 if you guys would like to go back in Acts um, and check that out and read about them. There's a couple big chunks of scripture that are specifically about the town of Ephesus and the Ephesians. Before I start reading, I just want to point out that I am reading from the She Reads Truth Bible, and it is Christian Standard Bible. So if you have a different Bible and it has different wording, um, it's still very incorrect. Um, it'll just sound a little bit different. Or if you have the same Bible as me or the same version, it'll sound exactly alike. I'm going to start off by just reading a couple verses, and then we'll stop and talk about those verses um, and go back and digest some of it and talk about it and break it down. I'm going to start off reading verses 1 and 2, which is just summarizing what I just said. Verse 1 starts, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by God's will, to the faithful saints in Christ Jesus at Ephesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's the first two verses, um, and then we start getting into some of the stuff that Paul really wants us to take from this. That was just an introduction, um, starting in verse 3, and we're going to read to verse 14 and stop and talk about that a little bit. And if you're someone that writes in your Bible, which I am, this is what Ephesians 1, 2, and the beginning of 3 look like in my Bible. Um, I love sticky notes and writing in it. Um, if you're someone that likes doing that as well, I just encourage you as we're reading these verses to circle every time it says, in him. So let's get started. Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavens in Christ. For he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless in love before him. He pre predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ for himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, and he lavished on us in the beloved one. Verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, that he richly poured out on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he purposed in Christ as a plan for the right time, to bring everything together in Christ, both things in heaven and things on earth in him. In him we have also received an inheritance because we are predestined according to the plan of the one who works out everything in agreement with the purpose of his will, 
so that we who had already put our hope in Christ Jesus might bring praise to his glory. Verse 13, In him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when he also, when you also believed, were sealed in him with the promised Holy Spirit. He is the down payment for our inheritance until the redemption of the possession to the praise of his glory. So I hope that you circled every time it says in him or in Christ. Um, it says a lot, which is really comforting for us to know that um, everything that we have and have inherited, as it talks about, is through Jesus. And I love these verses because it tells us who we are, right? It tells us that we're chosen to be holy and blameless and blessed and adopted and lavished in grace, which I love that picture that we're lavished in God's grace. Um, we have redemption, forgiveness, and that we're believers. Um, and I really like that it just draws out exactly who we are, and I love the idea that we're chosen. And I got this from Deuteronomy 7.7, 7, um, and just kind of processed it a little bit about us being chosen, what that means. Um, and it was not because you were more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you, for you were the fewest of all peoples. So it's not even that we're chosen because there's a lot of us or we're a part of a certain group or tribe or anything. Um, we were actually the fewest of peoples, um, and God still chose us, which just packs an even bigger punch that um, we're chosen by God in Christ um, and that it wasn't an accident. To back up a little bit and talk about verses 7 through 10, um, these are super comforting for humans, I think, because we all want to be known and forgiven of the things that we've done wrong, um, and we want to be redeemed and have unity with other people. We love to be around other people, um, especially me. I'm a big extrovert, so I love people. But I love that verses 7 through 10 really hit on these things. Um, in verse 7, it talks about that we're redeemed um, and that we're forgiven, which are two things that we desperately want as humans. Verse 9 talks about us being known, um, and verse 10 talks about us having unity with other people. So I think these verses directly relate to things that humans naturally want as being human, um, which is really comforting to know that we have all of those things in Jesus. We're going to keep reading with verses 15 through 23 in the first chapter. Um, to start off, my there's uh, little subtitles or little captions above different parts of scripture in your Bible. Um, and my Bible says that this section is a prayer for spiritual insight. Um, but I think that this is also a prayer for hope and power and our worth. So I really enjoy the, this prayer that Paul um, has written down for us. And it says this. This is why, since I have heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have never stopped giving thanks for you, as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the wealth of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the mighty working of his strength? I love verse 16, um, that it says, I never stop giving thanks for you. I just love that idea that there's somebody, um, Paul is never going to stop giving thanks for the people in Ephesus. And I really hope that we have people like this in our life. Um, I know that I definitely do have people that Every time I pray, or most of the time that I pray, I never stop giving thanks for um, these people and how they've shown me Jesus and always been there for me and supportive. And I hope that all of us can look at our lives and be like, yeah, I am always going to pray thanks for those people um, because they have done so many things to point me toward Jesus. In verse 19, um, it talks about power. It continues talking about it in verses 20 through 23, so I want to keep reading. It says, he exercised this power in Christ by raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, and every title given, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he subjected everything under his feet and appointed him as head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. And I love that all this power that Paul is talking about is Jesus. Um, and God had the power to send him to earth and raise him from the dead 
and see him at the right hand um, of the throne in heaven. Um, and I also love that he directly says that um, this unity that you guys will have will be the church and the head of the church will be Jesus. And um, no one needs to worry about getting to the top or being the best dominion or anything like that, the head of the dominion. Um, and no one's going to be more powerful than Jesus and he's going to be your leader and he's going to be the head of the church. Um, and all of you guys will be in unity because of him. I love how Paul is laying out um, the first in the first chapter of Ephesians just who we are um, and who Jesus is and where our place is with him and where his place is with God. Um, and I really hope that you guys enjoyed this first chapter and our Bible study. Next time we're going to talk about Ephesians 2 and 3 together. Um, so I hope that you'll continue reading through Ephesians. If you want to go ahead and read two and three and be ready and have some thoughts together before the next time the next video um feel free to do that i'm glad that you guys all are here and doing this bible study with me pray that you'll continue to go through this with me go ahead and be sure to subscribe to my channel um and also if you want to see any more of my social medias i'll have them in the description box um yeah you guys are awesome and I'm so glad that Jesus brought us together in this little journey.